Welcome back to the Get A Brew channel. So today we've got a behind the scenes exclusive. If you have an interest in peated whiskey, if you're interested in tasting it and wanted to know how those flavors are imparted into it, uh, we've had the privilege and access given to us today by our friends at Montans at their Tithe Top uh, peated production facility, which is behind me. So um, we really are privileged because we're getting to see inside the kilns, getting access to things. Everything has been shut down to allow us to be able to get in and get really in and show you all the information in relation to peated malt um, production. So we're going to get a tour from Nick. Uh, Nick's background is that he's a master brewer. He's got like a wealth of experience and he's going to share a tour with us today. So come on in and check it out. So Nick, thanks for taking us on the tour of the peating plant today. This is the start of the process. That's right. So um, Laurie's come from Bridlington, put the green malt tip here, That's literally it. just where we're at, and then augers into the kiln. Straight. Absolutely. So basically what happens, they reverse up this ramp, uh, tip into, into this hopper here, transferred onto the conveyors all the way up into the top of the kiln. Yeah. So we don't have any buffer, we don't have any weighting or anything like that. It goes straight in, really to start the process. Yeah. And you just work 24 hours a day? 24-7, yep, 24-7. Yeah. The silos that are behind us here, explain yep. the difference in size and what, 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 what they're doing and what their okay. purpose is. So on the left-hand side, we've got the analysis bins. So the idea is that each batch coming off the kiln goes into its own analysis bin. The ones on the right-hand side, which are 210 tonnes, uh, are the storage bins. Yeah. So the idea is that basically we'll make the decision which of the analysis bins um, which hold, as I say, around about 45 tonnes in a batch. Yeah. Um, each of those will blend uh, either one, two, or even all five together into the storage bin. Okay. Okay. So there's, take us through the products that you supply. So there's a light peated, a medium peated, and a, and a heavy peated. So we do lightly peated, medium peated, and heavily peated. Lightly peated, we will operate around about the 15 parts per million. Okay. Medium peated, we're looking at a target of around about 30 parts per million. Yeah. Right? And heavily peated, we're looking at a target of around about 50 parts per million. Okay. And that's plus or minus 10% or 10% to allow us a little bit of flexibility in terms of blending. Okay, and if someone's watching this that's never had any experience with peated malt at all, uh, that's used as 100% like like their pot still malt. Yep. So you, it has got the white malt blended into it to make sure that absolutely. the conversion's there and there's uh, enough enzyme abs activity. Abs absolutely. I mean, what we what we tend to find is that we, we actually don't lose a great deal. I think there was the expectation in the early days that we were going to lose some of the performance of the malt because of what we're doing to it, yeah. in terms of the effect of the smoke and so on and so forth. But we don't really see that. So the, the malt itself is perfectly good. The, the distilling malt that we get from Bridlington to blend it yeah. with, again, is of, of top quality. Yeah. Um, so there's, but there's no loss in quality just because it's heavily peated compared to lightly peated. Yeah, and everything travels with the full professional Montans packaging certificate of analysis, yes, lab testing, hundred percent, hundred percent, yeah, absolutely, yeah, absolutely. ultra premium, absolutely, hundred yeah. percent. So Nick, they, you were explaining to me there. This is obviously the peat that you use. It's sourced from reputable, sustainable um, suppliers in Scotland. And peat is a very unique product in that it's the age and process is so long yeah. that to get a consistency with peat is difficult. So there's a lot of skill from you and your team here to try and blend it and get yeah. a consistent. Uh, uh, abs absolutely. And, and again, what we aim for is to try to make the process as consistent as possible. So we rely very heavily on the peat source itself. So that they're sending us consistent batches and consistent quality. Yeah. Um, as well as the way we handle it and what we do with it. Yeah. And again, because it's so old, because it's 4,000 years old, there are going to be differences, there are going to be variabilities in yeah. that, so we have to manage that. So you're wanting to create a smolder with a low, as low a temperature yeah. smoke as possible yeah. so that the, the malt takes it in better, you know. So, so we're, looking, we're looking at controlling that, that burn, if you like, um, and there's various ways we can do that, whether we can, we can put water on, uh, we, can, we can try and starve it of oxygen. Yeah. Uh, it's basically everything to try and keep the temperatures low. Yeah. Right? 
Um, we're looking probably roundabouts of operating the, the, the smoke coming out at around about sort of 40, 50 degrees centigrade or something yeah. like that. Right? And from there, it mixes with the fresh air, which is being heated up by the, the, the heater in the combustion chamber. And that then passes through into the kiln, yeah. uh, into the malt itself. Your peating for, or the peating process in total takes about 30 hours? About 30 hours, but that's including the drying, which is the, the, the primary function of the kiln. Yeah, lovely. Yeah. So Nick, thanks for taking us inside the kiln here. Um, Peated malt production, take us very briefly through what happens in this, this part. Okay, so we get the, uh, the green malt from Bridlington, which comes in at a moisture content of around about 45% moisture. Yeah. Okay, that's brought in through the top of the kiln here, yeah. and discharged on the floor on the deck plates uh, immediately below us. Yeah. What happens then is this whole arm, this radial arm goes around with the screw underneath it and levels out each of the three loads that we have coming in on the wagons. Yeah. Right, on the final time, it goes around once more just to make sure we've got an absolutely level bed. And the idea being that any air or smoke that we're putting through the underbed percolates through at exactly the same rate and then we get consistency across the bed. Yeah. There's a few things that I find really fascinating. Uh, firstly, the, w whenever it comes in, the moisture's high and you deliberately leave that moisture level high with low temperatures of, of peat smoke coming through. Just take us through why you do that little okay. thing. So in the early stages of kilning, basically we're wanting to get to what's called the break. Okay, and basically this is a, a, a period where the enzymes within the grain are the most sensitive. So by, if we introduce too much heat at that point, it would denature the enzymes and affect the performance of the malt. Right? Likewise, we're also trying to introduce peat smoke at the time. So again, those higher moisture levels tend to help with the adherence of the phenol compounds onto the surface of the malt. Okay. Okay, so after, after probably around about 12, 14 hours or so, we then start increasing the temperature, right, to, to um, not, not significantly, but increasing it nonetheless, till we get to that break point, and then we can start the proper drying process in the kiln. Yeah, and then there's a wedge wire in the base of the kiln, which allows a nice even distribution, and it's easier for cleaning as well. Yeah, absolutely. So just because of the, 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 uh, the design of the wedge wire, basically uh, it allows for any dirt or any debris as such, or, or roots or shoots as such, which drop through, to, to fall easily through and it's therefore easier to clean and again that just allows that consistency in terms of the airflow through the bed. Whenever, now I know that the, the center reservation there pops up to allow the, you know, the finished product mm -hmm. to be, you know, it reversed, yep. shipped out. Um, whenever that's happening, is that done in stages to, to sort of separate the bed or is it all done in one big quick go? Quick go? In essence, what will happen is the, the screw was, was standing over That'll go down, take out a wedge, as we call it, of the, of the bed, right? That bell housing at the bottom of the, uh, the, 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 the tower there yeah. lifts up and then the, the screw itself then turns, goes the other way and takes the grain through to the, uh, the bell housing where it drops through into conveyor to be taken off to the dresser. Yeah. Okay. Um, the idea being that obviously it'll go round then and it will obviously mix quite considerably all the different layers of the grain anyway as it's going around. Okay. So again, you get that homogenous mix. And there's still smoke coming through at that stage? At that stage, we'd have finished smoking, we'd have finished peating. Um, so by the, end of the, by the end of the process, the peating process itself takes between 12 and 15 hours. Okay. Right? The whole kilning exercise to get it dried to around about four and a half percent moisture takes around about 30 hours. What this does is it splits 50-50, so you get half the grain going this way and half the grain going that way. Yeah. And it, each grain has a, exactly the same opportunity to go this way or that, that way. way. So yeah. you get an absolute split of the sample. Yeah. Right? And from that, we can produce a really representative sample of that batch yeah. to be able to send off for analysis or to keep and so on and so forth. So, Nick, we're at the final stage, um, dressing, packaging, ready for out to export. So, take us through the process behind us. Yeah, so from the kiln uh, outside, we come into the dresser on the top, which is just a series of sh shaking beds and sieves, and only roots and shoots and any dust or, or parts of particles of husk or anything get dropped off. Um, the whole clean grain and such then tr drops through to the bottom gets transferred through up an elevator and into one of the storage bins. Okay. Okay. 
When we're now in the, the packing area, um, basically what we'll do is we'll run up into this buffer bin, uh, a blend um, from the storage bins, yeah. right, ready to pack. And basically it can either go then to the tote filling machine, uh, the cradle there, which is holding one of the totes, yeah. or to the packing line there where we can do the 25 kilogram bags. Yeah, and you do whole or crush. And we can do it either whole or crush. We've got a little mill at the back which uh, operates there. Yeah. And I think the key thing is again, what, anything which is, comes on site is treated as peated product. Yeah. So uh, we would never send anything back to Bridlington, for instance. So yeah. it, this is this is absolutely sold here yeah. um, and free from any contamination. Yeah. So unique production site just for so absolutely yeah, yep, for the three peated yep. products. Yep. Lovely. Hi, I'm Nick Bathy. I'm the uh, peating plant manager here at Munson's at Tithe Top Farm in North Yorkshire. Uh, I've been at Munson's about coming up for three years now um, and it's a super company to work for, a real family atmosphere. Uh, what we're doing is really quite cutting edge in terms of our production um, and this has been a fantastic experience for me. So there you have it, uh, we've had a tour with Nick, he's shown us around the beautiful facility in uh, Yorkshire here at Tithe Top. Um, really really interesting from our point of view in relation to the production process and how they are you know like doing a lot of really cutting edge um, procedures and technologies here and one thing that I thought was fascinating is that the consistency of the product that they produce is there, there's a lot of detail that goes into that not only in the process if you take the you know the the green mulch coming out of the germination boxes it's coming straight here it's going straight into the kiln the smoke is being added at low temperatures at high moisture to ensure that that peated flavor gets really locked in and then it's kilned um, so that it's it's creating that consistent flavor across the whole batch then when it comes to blending they have these really fancy valves that you know the technology allows them to know if it isn't flowing at the rate that it is in the blend and it opens and shuts the shutters to make sure that they're getting a really accurate blend. So super premium quality, super, you know, focus on consistency. Again, because it's Montans, they're all about sustainability and their production methods. And, you know, really interesting day. We hope you enjoyed it. Please share your feedback with us. And until next time, happy distilling. <laughs>